this very important um, day. I am uh, Pastor Jesse Lent. I am the pastor at Mayflower Congregational UCC. And, uh, we are an open and affirming congregation, and I begin every service as the UCC does, where we say, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, regardless of sexual orientation or identity or really anything. Um, when I first came to uh, Sioux City, I had been involved with the open and affirming uh, churches in uh, both the Disciples of Christ and the United Church of Christ. And at my home church, we always had a gay pride service with all of the churches that identified as being open and affirming and were willing to be vocal about that. And when I first came to Sioux City and was in the first uh, Pride Festival, we were beginning to kind of come out of COVID, and I noticed that it was really just Mayflower and your church, which was the only tables there. I'm very happy this year that St. Thomas Episcopal joined us, and uh, that, that is a blessing. But I got with uh, Carter, and I said we should come together and uh, to do this service, because um, many of you know we live in a pretty conservative, well, really conservative area, and there's not very many of us. And um, no matter our differences, we hold the open and affirming idea in common, and we both want to build inclusive uh, communities. So, this morning, I'm going to be speaking to you uh, from a progressive, liberal, Christian uh, perspective. And um, in addition to gay pride, one of the things that is being celebrated in our churches this Sunday is Pentecost. Now, it ties in perfectly with your children's message about fire. On Pentecost, you know, we do things like people wear red. Um, we call it the birthday of the church. Uh, some people, even you know, churches, um, like my other church in Whiting, actually have a birthday cake, and we all eat cake together, celebrating the beginning of the Jesus movement, of what would become um, Christianity. Birthdays mark significant moments of growth and development for us in our lives. One of the things that when we're going through this growth and development each year as we celebrate birthdays, the thing that we primarily have to deal with as we grow up or come of age is how we deal with differences in people. And along with the Pentecost story, the other story that is in our revised common lectionary is the story of the Tower of Babel. And this morning, um, I want to compare and contrast the Tower of Babel story with the Pentecost story and connect Pentecost with gay pride. Connect all these three together. Now the Tower of Babel story was written by the ancient Israelites and it was a way for them to try to explain why the world was the way that it is. The story begins with everyone on the earth having only one language, if you can believe it or not. And the people decide that they are going to build a city with a tower that reaches up to heaven. It says that their purpose they have for doing this, this is so that they can make a name for themselves. And they want to prevent people from being scattered across the earth. They want everyone to be the same and to live in one place. Now, God in this story decides to confuse the languages, and people are inevitably scattered across the earth. Now, the Tower of Babel is an example of unity without diversity. And it is still part of the reason why there is so much hatred and violence in our world today. They don't want diversity. They want everyone to be like them. The shootings in Buffalo, New York, white 18 year old male who was a white supremacist opened fire in a supermarket that was predominantly African American. 
He killed 10 people. He made a remark on his Facebook page that he was motivated to kill because he feared that the white race was going to be replaced by people of other races. He couldn't accept the differences in people. He wanted everyone to be like him. We've seen this over and over, the Pulse nightclub shootings in Orlando, Florida, <coughs> legislation against transgender people, don't say gay bills in Florida, uh, restricting what books we can be offered at the school library, restricting what can be taught in the public schools about race or sexual orientation. The culture right now and the society that we are currently living in wants to live in that city by the Tower of Babel. This is why the divisions and the violence within our society is so strong. Too many people don't want unity in and with diversity. We want unity on our own terms, which means just with people who look and talk like us. Now, Pentecost is the counter-narrative to the Tower of Babel. Give a little bit of background about Pentecost. Pentecost is the season, uh, the day, especially marked on the Christian calendar, that takes place 50 days after Easter. It is commemorated as the day in which the Holy Spirit empowers his disciples to be the church. Pentecost is also a part of the Jewish calendar. Judaism refers to it as Shavuot, which marks the 50 days after Passover, when the Israelites were liberated from slavery in Egypt. It is also known as the Festival of Weeks, which was a harvest festival. Now, later on in Jewish history, after the temple is destroyed, the meaning of this day changes a bit, and it's then commemorated as the time in which Moses received the Ten Commandments, the Law of God, on Mount Sinai. Now, the story of Pentecost be begins with the disciples all together in a house in Jerusalem. Outside of this house, the city is filled with many different people that speak all different kinds of languages. While they're in this house, there's all of a sudden this rush of a violent wind that fills the whole room where they're sitting. In Iowa, we've had quite a few experiences with wind. <laughs> These divided tongues of fire appear above each of their heads. Think of how odd, strange image that they have fire above their heads connection here with the burning bush because see when the bush is burning it's not consumed so when the fire is burning above their heads it's not consuming them there's a connection there they begin at this point to speak in other languages all of the other people who are outside of the house can manage to hear them and they notice that they have the ability to speak their own native language they all flock to the house and are Amazed and bewildered. What are these backcountry Galileans doing speaking in our own native language? Languages and other cultures have always fascinated me, and you don't have to travel very far, especially in the Midwest, to notice our differences when it comes to language and culture. Languages can also be something that either unites us or divides us. I can remember when I was a legislative intern in Jefferson City, Missouri, I'm a native Missourian, and a legislator introduced a bill to make English the official language of Missouri. Everyone was already speaking English predominantly, and we already knew that. The real intention of the bill was to say that we don't want to learn how to speak any other language. We just want to speak the language, we want everyone to speak the same language that we do. You don't have to. I can remember when I lived in Wisconsin for two years. I never really thought about it until someone told me by a native Wisconsin that I had a southern accent. <laughs> of course, I always noticed their northern accents of ya yeah and OGs. Oh, now, also, when I was in Milwaukee, a lady came up to me and referred to the water fountain as a bubbler. Now, 
even in my state of Missouri, there are two distinct types of language from my part of the state, which is the northwest corner. Most people just say Missouri, the ordinary way, Missouri. But if you go further into southern Missouri or closer to Boot Hill, closer to Arkansas, they'll have a tendency to say Missouri. Huh? Now, when I first moved to Iowa, I heard something that was new to me. I never heard of a sloppy joe-like sandwich being called a tavern or loose meats. I thought a tavern was a place where people went to drink beer. <laughs> what we learn from this story of Pentecost, in contrast to the story of Babel, is that when we allow the, the universal spirit to have control, there can be unity in and with diversity. It is how we were created to be, and it is how I believe uh, God, or however you want to uh, refer to that ultimate reality, wants us to be. When we come together, despite our differences, with a common goal, we can truly change the world, as those first disciples did. Pentecost was that transformative developmental experience for them that enabled them to walk on their own with the help of the Spirit. And we all have much more in common than we know. We are both communities of faith that believe that there should be an open and affirming space in Sioux City that accepts all people regardless of sexual orientation or identity. We both believe in social justice for all people. We support the Siouxland Soup Kitchen, the Zestos Food Giveaways, our free rummage. Many of us have supported, many of us here support the Trevor Project, which is something that I give to every single year, the Human Rights Commission. We do have some differences. We don't all believe the same things about God or the ultimate questions of life. But we can still come together and embrace one another's diversity because our mission is the same more open and inclusive community of faith. William Sloan Coffin uh, was uh, a hero to me. He's uh, gone now. He was a progressive uh, Christian minister, and uh, he was friends with the socialist Norm Thomas. Now, Norm Thomas uh, was uh, atheist or agnostic, and uh, Coffin went to visit him when he was in the hospital on his deathbed. And they had a conversation about God. And Coffin basically said to him, you know, whether or not you believe in God or not is not what's most important. What is important is whether or not God believes in you. And I say this to you, you are God's faithful Servant. And Thomas reached up to him and shook his hand, um, said, Thanks, Bill. That makes it easier to die. May we both work together to achieve the values that we have in common while embracing our diversity. That's the message, I believe, of gay pride, and that was the message of Pentecost where the fires were unleashed, but the people were not consumed. Because I know that God believes in us. <laughs>